Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Strong in the Saddle. I'm your host, Katrina. And before we get into today's episode, we need to do a little bit of house cleaning because things are a little bit different this week. So for the past several months at this point, I have been doing video podcasts where I, you guys have seen me talking and like all that stuff for the podcast and I've been posting that on my usual feed for my podcast as well as on my YouTube channel. However, (laughs) it is a lot more work than I anticipated to put together a video podcast, especially one where there's a bit more editing involved to make it a bit more compelling for a YouTube viewer. And so I've decided for the time being that I'm going to not be doing quite the same thing. I'm still going to be posting the podcast, of course, on my usual podcast feed and on YouTube, but the video that accompanies it is not going to be like, you're not seeing my face. I'm not recording video right now. It is just audio. And then um, I'm either going to just have a picture of the logo on the video or like my podcast art, or just maybe some clips of me riding, which I will have decided by the time this episode airs, but I'm on the fence about it right now. So that's kind of the one thing changing. Another thing, so in place of that, my hope is I really, really, really want to see my YouTube channel grow right now. And so I, the reason I'm pulling back on the video podcast is because I want to do, have more time to edit actual videos. And so you will start to see in addition to the video for the podcast going up on my YouTube channel, I will also hopefully have a weekly additional YouTube video of either like day in the life or training. Um, The video I'm working on right now is like a meet my horse video because I know lots of you have some questions about the horses that I ride. So that will be coming out and we'll kind of do it that way for now, kind of see how it goes and kind of go from there. So enough with that. Let's get into today's episode. So with all of this video, social media stuff that I've been doing, I have been videoing myself riding quite a bit more than I have in the past. And I'm not going to lie, more often than not, I am cringing at my riding. (laughs) I'm cringing at the fact that Diesel and I aren't farther along than I had anticipated. And I'm cringing at the fact that I don't look as good or don't perform as good in the saddle as I had, as I thought I was. And there's definitely this disconnect between how you feel when you're on a horse and what you actually look like. And yes, that disconnect for me right now is massive. And so that's why today I wanted to talk about how to get better at riding because in addition to continuing continuing to improve Diesel's progress as a reining horse, as a western riding horse, I also want to focus on me and getting my riding up to a level that makes me feel a bit more comfortable with where I'm at because I know Yes, it's really good to focus on where Diesel's at and where he's going, but I need to keep up with him. I need to become a better rider so that he can become a better horse. And so today I'm going to go through some ways to go about getting better at riding. And this is across disciplines. I don't care if you're in the Western or English industry, if you're like you compete every weekend or you don't compete at all. This applies across the board. If you want to get riding period. These are going to be the ways you're going to do it. And at the end, I'm also going to talk about some misconceptions about getting better at riding, some misconceptions that I've definitely had that have actually held me back in my riding. So let's dig into it. So the first way that I would say you can get better at riding is consistent practice. Consistent practice is key when it comes to enhancing your riding skills. Make it a habit to ride regularly and that's the way you're going to build muscle memory, you're going to improve coordination, and you're going to develop a deeper connection with your horse. You need to 
set aside dedicated time for your writing sessions where you can really focus on specific skills and exercises that will contribute to your growth as a writer. And when when I think about this consistent practice, I always think about the 10,000 hour rule, which was popularized by author Malcolm Gladwell, and it emphasizes the importance of deliberate practice and the immense amount of time required to achieve mastery in any field. The rule suggests that it takes approximately 10,000 hours of focused, purposeful practice to become an expert in any particular skill or domain. This rule serves as a reminder that true expertise and proficiency are not attained overnight. And this applies to so many things beyond just riding, but definitely this applies to riding. You're not going to become an expert overnight, but through countless hours of dedicated effort, learning and refinement, you can. So whether it's riding horses, playing a musical instrument, or excelling in some other sport, the 10,000 hour rule reminds us that sustained commitment and consistent practice are the pathways to excellence. And so I just kind of wanted to break this down for you guys. I'm a numbers girl, and so I was very curious to see what does 10,000 hours actually look like, because I feel like... It just seems kind of abstract, just like this big round number. But let's say that you ride five days a week for an average of 45 minutes each ride. And you do this about 48 weeks out of the year, which this is actually more, I think, than I would ride. I ride six days a week as much as I can for about 30 to 45 minutes. But I don't ride 48 weeks out of the year because of winter. But let's say 45 minutes a day, five days a week, 48 weeks out of the year. So that equates to 180 hours in a year. So if you're riding 180 hours in a year, let me just, how many years do you think it's going to take to get to 10,000 hours? It's going to take 56 years if you are consistent with this for that entire 56 years, which I don't think anyone would be unless you're a professional horse trainer, which you're going to be riding way more than 180 hours a year if you're a horse trainer. But yes, 180 hours in a year, 56 years to get to 10,000 hours. So by that logic, most people are never going to become an expert if we're following this rule that you need 10,000 hours to become an expert in your field. I would say that it might be true, but you don't necessarily need 10,000 hours to become a fairly good rider, right? But it just drives home the point that you really, really need to put in the time, the hours, the saddle time. There's no getting around that. And that's why, yeah, my first suggestion for getting better at riding is put in the time you need to ride. I think a lot of people nowadays, they don't want to put in the work to get the reward, but it does not work that way with horses. You need to put in the work and you need to be riding. My second suggestion for how to get better is to take lessons. So no matter your level of experience, Taking lessons from a qualified riding instructor is invaluable. Working with a knowledgeable professional provides you with proper guidance, feedback, and personalized instruction. Regular lessons not only help you refine your technique, but you also are able to address any areas of weakness and receive tailored exercises to improve your riding abilities. One great thing about getting lessons is that these people that you're learning from, they've been there, done that, they've made the mistakes, and you can actually capitalize and almost like leapfrog by leveraging their experience because they're going to guide you in a way that will allow you to avoid the mistakes that they've made, which like that can make your progress accelerate 
insanely. Like if you can learn from other people's mistakes, you're going to learn way faster and improve way faster than someone who's having to make those mistakes themselves. One caveat that I will put here when you're looking for an instructor is lots of people will look to individuals who have had success in the show pen or just trainers that are really, really good at training horses. Those people do not necessarily have the skills to be a good instructor. There's a very big difference between the skill set to be a good showman, the skill set to be a good trainer, and the skill set to be a good riding instructor. So it's you need to look for that person who, yes, has the experience in, say, showing and training, but who also has a very, very good ability to convey those skills to their students what you'll find is a lot of trainers they know how to do the thing but when it comes to explaining how to do how to do the thing they don't really know how because they just do it like it just comes natural to them or they've done it for so many years that they just don't know how to articulate it into words and yeah it they just aren't good instructors I guess I'll say so that's just something to be aware of but taking lessons um, definitely something you want to consider Um, there's a variety of ways that you can do this so there's obviously private lessons you can take group lessons or you can go to clinics you can I know lots of instructors you can send in video and they will like send you feedback to you know improve upon Or there's even trainers now doing like Zoom lessons. So it's like on the spot, real time, you're getting feedback as you're riding your horse. So all kind of things to consider. This is an area where I've been really good with in the past. I took tons of lessons back in the day when I was first learning to ride as well as when I was barrel racing. But Recently, now that I'm getting into raining and stuff, I have not. I took a few clinics last year, but other than that, I haven't had lessons. And this is definitely going to be an area that myself personally, I'm going to be looking into potentially taking some lessons just to kind of get me in a direction that I need to be going and get getting me focused on the things that I should be working on. The next way to improve your riding or to get better at riding is, and I think this is probably not going to surprise some of you that I'm saying this, it's to improve your fitness. Now, I will raise my hand and be the first to say having a higher level of fitness has 100% improved my riding. So for those of you who don't know, um, like over a decade ago, I did suffer with anorexia and as a consequence of that I was very thin I was very tired and I was very weak I was working out a lot but because I wasn't eating enough I was the farthest thing that you could be from fit I was sick to be frank Um, but riding is a very physically demanding activity if if you're doing more than I would say just trail riding and but you know trail riding has its physical demands as well and improving your fitness can greatly enhance your performance in the saddle as equestrians we know that riding requires physical strength and stability but incorporating strength training into your routine can significantly significantly enhance your riding abilities just because you're now a stronger, more able person. Strength training involves exercises that target specific muscle groups to build maybe a combination, I would say, of strength, power, and endurance. A lot of riders make the mistake of focusing solely on just riding, but integrating strength training into your regime can provide several benefits that directly impact your performance as an equestrian. One of the key advantages of strength training for riders is improved posture in the saddle and stability in the saddle. 
Riding requires a very strong and stable core and back and leg muscles to maintain that proper alignment and balance in the saddle. So we're thinking, you know, like the plumb line from your ear to your shoulder, to your hip, to your heel. And through targeted exercises, you can really develop the muscular strength and stability needed to maintain that solid position when riding regardless of what the horse is doing underneath you. Strength training also really enhances your balance and coordination, which are vital for effective communication with your horse. You can target specific muscle groups such as like your hip stabilizers and your glutes to help you improve your ability to absorb and follow your horse's movements and just make sure that you're yeah kind of harmonious with them in the saddle so exercises like single leg squats or balance drills lateral lunges they can all help enhance your proprioception your coordination and just your overall body control of course strong and resilient leg muscles are crucial for riders i think we all need that especially when it comes to maintaining proper leg position, applying your aids, and again, maintaining maintaining stability in the saddle. Strength training exercises like, you know, squats, deadlifts, calf raises, which (laughs) one note on calf raises, I haven't done calf raises since Oh, I want to say like 2013. It's so like 10 years since I've done calf raises because I thought it was just kind of dumb to work my calves. And I started a new workout program and it called for a calf exercise. And I found I was really weak in my calves. And my left calf is significantly weaker than my right calf. And you can guarantee that like if I can notice a significant muscle musculature imbalance when I'm working out, you can guarantee that that is impacting my riding. So I've now incorporated calf raises into my workout routine because I want to improve my riding. So all of those exercises, squats, deadlifts, calf exercises, they can all help to develop the necessary leg strength and endurance required for a prolonged riding session, uh, for jumping, whatever maneuvers you're doing. Um, Strength training also just helps you to prevent common riding-related injuries. If you're stronger, you're less likely to get hurt. So incorporating strength training into your routine as a rider can yield significant benefits. Improved riding posture, enhanced balance and coordination, increased leg strength and endurance, injury prevention, all the advantages that you will see materialize if you develop a consistent strength training routine. Um, I do have prior episodes related to fitness and whatnot, but definitely if you're unsure, definitely seek out the help of a qualified fitness professional to develop some sort of tailored training program that suits your specific needs. Number four, the fourth reason or the fourth way to improve your riding, build a strong foundation. So focus on mastering the basics. I feel like I talk about this a lot when it comes to diesel and his training, but it's also really important as a rider. So when I say the basics, I mean things like proper position, your balance, and control. You need to spend time perfecting your seat, your leg, and hand aids, and because that's how you're going to be more effective communicating with your horse. And by establishing that solid base foundation, you'll be better prepared to tackle those more complex maneuvers down the road. A strong and secure seat is essential for any rider, regardless of your discipline. And because it just, it's the foundation for effective communication with your horse. And 
one of the most effective exercises to develop a better seat and better posture is riding while you're being lunged. So this would involve someone someone else lunging your horse while you're riding and you're only focusing on your position and balance in the saddle. By taking away the responsibility of controlling the horse's movements, you are then able to concentrate completely on your body alignment, your weight distribution, and just following your horse's motion. I understand that this option isn't available for everyone, myself included. I don't have someone who can lunge my horse for me while I'm riding. But if you're able to do this, I definitely recommend it. A lot of the top riders, especially I have found in the English world, talk about how they spent hours being lunged on a horse and how they definitely attribute that to their correct posture in the saddle now. Riding while you're being lunged allows you to develop that that very sought after independent seat where your body moves in sync with your horse's rhythm. It's going to help you become aware of any imbalances or tension in your body, enabling you to make necessary adjustments for a more secure and effective seat. Another valuable exercise for developing a better seat is to ride without stirrups. Of course, it goes without saying that you need to make sure that you're in in a safe environment and on a safe horse when you're doing this. Um, I definitely ride without stirrups, but uh, I'm careful to do it when I know my horse is a bit more dialed into me, maybe at the end of a ride. And I also make sure, like I know there are specific places in our arena where my horse is more prone to spook. So when riding without stirrups, I might just, avoid those spots for the time being just to be on the safe side because I ride alone. Um, But anyways, by removing your stirrups, you can challenge yourself to rely more on your balance and leg strength and core stability. It, it, It really forces you to engage your seat and use your leg aids more effectively because you're not, you don't have the support of your stirrups. So I would say start with shorter bouts of riding without stirrups and then gradually increase as, you know, your strength and stability improve. But just remember, I feel like when we ditch our stirrups, we might have a tendency to get a little stiff with our movements. Remember to be as relaxed and supple as possible and just allow your hips and your pelvis to kind of move freely with your horse's motion. Um, developing a better seat, it's, it, it takes a lot of time and just patience, consistency, and just being willing to suck at things for a while, challenge yourself and just keep at it. Focus on those basics and your riding will improve. Another way to improve your riding is And this kind of sounds lame, but I will explain. So practice mindful riding. So I'm very guilty of not doing this. I ride like 99% of the time with AirPods in. And I'm either usually listening to a podcast or I'm talking like my mom or my husband on the phone. Not a great strategy for being mindful with what you're doing with your horse. Mindfulness plays a vital role in improving your riding. Stay mentally present and fully engaged during your rides. I know it's it's easier said than done, <laughs> but you really need to be paying. There's so many things to pay attention to when you're riding. You've got your body position, your aids, how, how your horse is responding, like being able to be mindful of all those things and respond accordingly, like that takes a lot of concentration. And if you're like deeply in deep in thought about the podcast you're listening to or about the conversation you're having with someone, it's, it's just, you're, you don't have the con the concentration and mindfulness necessary to really be doing, I think the most effective job as a rider. Uh, So I would definitely say 
do what you need to do to be able to concentrate. I actually find one thing that does help me concentrate is music and particularly music that it has a good beat so I tend to not ride aggressively enough so I need upbeat music that I don't know the lyrics to so I'm not lollygag and singing the songs but it's got a good beat that keeps me like pumped up and stuff like that that's what keeps me personally concentrated for others you might need complete silence kind of you need to figure out what works for you but definitely be mindful when you're riding like we're only on their backs for what half an hour to an hour at a time I'm pretty sure you can take that time to like step out of the world and just focus on your horse and I'm definitely talking to myself when I say that (laughs) another way to improve your riding is to ride different horses don't limit yourself to just one horse and I've definitely made this mistake I rode junior and junior only from 2006 until 2022 and then I got diesel and now challenging yourself by riding different horses with you know varying temperaments and abilities will greatly enhance your riding each horse presents unique challenges and by adapting to their individual traits you'll become a more adaptable and well-rounded rider Um, each horse yeah they have their own unique personality their movement training level you're going to learn to adjust your riding style to each horse and that's going to be make you become a more effective and like even like empathetic rider you're going to be more in tune because you're not 100 percent sure what to expect Like with Junior, riding him for that many years, like I knew 100% what to expect. And that became like, just like that was how I rode. And that reduces my flexibility as a rider. It doesn't challenge me. And therefore I did not get better in that sense. And so I really encourage you to try if you can to get on different horses. I know we can't all own some you know a barn full of horses but if you could like lease a horse or just go take lessons on someone else's horse somewhere each horse is going to teach you something new and that's going to really help with your riding journey as well another way to improve your riding seek out feedback from experienced riders trainers instructors anyone who you value their opinion seek feedback I would caution you to not seek feedback from the internet because the internet is very, very mean and also oftentimes very inaccurate. So if you can find someone in real life that you can get experience from, that you trust and admire and know that they know what they're talking about, that's who you should be seeking feedback from. Feedback allows you to gain valuable insights and you know identify areas for improvement and how you can refine your skills. One of the most effective ways, and we talked about this already, of receiving feedback is working with an instructor, of course. They're going to be able to provide you that on-site, in-real-time advice. And if you're working with them on an ongoing basis, they're going to get more and more familiar with you and your progress. And they're, it's going to be that consistent feedback that's really going to help you to have a structured learning environment where you're really improving And of course, you can get that kind of feedback from clinics and workshops and things too. Um, It doesn't necessarily always have to be like formal like that. You could ask your peers. Maybe you have a riding group that you're with or just, you know, some friends who also ride. Getting feedback from them is a really good idea. Of course, I touched on this before. Technology also plays a role in seeking feedback record your rides and review them afterwards like a football player would review their plays after a game watching videos of yourself riding can provide valuable self-assessment opportunities so a couple of things that i've noticed with my recent videos is one my riding overall just kind of needs work um my riding position overall has improved i think large in large part because of the saddle that I'm using. 
but I need to work on hand position um, and stuff like that. And then another thing I noticed was I need to ride more aggressively. I'm letting Diesel be a bit, be a bit lazy in his movements and in our rides overall. So I need to like put a spark plug in both our butts <laughs> and get going. So yeah, when you video yourself, you can analyze your position, timing, and just all those other areas so you can identify where you need to be putting your attention. And yeah, you can take those videos, share them with a mentor, a trainer for other constructive feedback. Attending horse shows or you know competitions, that can be another very blunt <laughs> way to receive feedback. Like you do well at the show, uh, that's great feedback. You get bad results at the show, that's more feedback. You can get judges' comments. All you know, if you're improving on your scores, all that sort of thing, that's all feedback that you can use to then go back to the practice pen and figure out what you need to do next. I think that's a really good way of spotlighting, like, hey, my lead changes at this show absolutely tanked. We need to work on that, as an example. Um, another way to practice or get better at riding. And this is helpful for like, say, if you're listening to this and it's winter time and you're not able to ride your horse, watch and learn. YouTube is your oyster. There's so much content on YouTube about how to improve your riding and all those sorts of things. Um, there's tons of courses out there now by very qualified instructors. There's books like go to shows, go to clinics and audit if you can't ride, like all those things. Observe, study technique, study how people are interacting with their horses and just watch and learn, like listen and take that to the practice pen when you are able to ride. Another way, and I, another way to improve your riding, and I did not want to include this, but I will just mention it in passing, is set goals. I think having a goal where you're, you have your sights set is really important for seeing progress in anything in life because it gives you a target to work towards as opposed to just kind of fluttering here and there with real no direct objective. Setting goals and like, really breaking them down into the steps that you need to do by these certain times is really a good way assuming you are able to keep yourself accountable or have someone else keep you accountable it's a really good way to improve your progress and I guess wrapping up this section of the podcast I will just say be patient persevere stay consistent this take as I said going back to that 10,000 hour rule it takes a very long time <laughs> to become a good rider. You can become an all right rider, but to like become one of those people that you really admire, like, I don't know, Sarah Dawson or I don't know, BZ Madden or Andrea Fapani or like any of those people that are really, really good at riding. They've been riding basically their entire lives and they've, they ride a lot and I think it's very easy to look at that and then get frustrated that you're not where they're at, but stick with it. If you're really passionate about this, like I am, you need to stick with it. Just know that it's just, if you do these things, you will continue to get better. You just need to be patient. And I know easier said than done. <clears throat> so those are the ways that you can get better at riding or just some suggestions before we wrap up, I just wanted to touch quickly on some misconceptions that could actually hinder your progress of becoming a better rider. And I will say I have definitely been guilty of these misconceptions. So I'm just going to run through these fairly quickly. There's five misconceptions that I want to touch on. Misconception one, just riding more will automatically make me better. Yes, regular riding is essential for progress. As I noted, that was the first way to get better. I noted was regular riding. But it's also important to note that quality matters more than quantity. So if you're simply spending hours in the saddle without 
purposeful practice or seeking guidance, you might not be improving. And I, this has definitely happened to me. Like I am the queen of consistency, but I can honestly probably say my riding has not improved that much in the last probably 10 years. That might be a bit harsh, but it's, it definitely hasn't improved as much as it could if I had been a bit more on top of saying I want to improve my riding. It's crucial, again, to focus on deliberate and, as, as I said, mindful pra- practice and to seek feedback from people who can help you out. Misconception number two, it's all about natural talent. While some riders definitely have certain innate qualities that give them a head start, riding is a skill that can be learned and developed by anyone. That is, I honestly believe that. Natural talent definitely provides a foundation, but true mastery comes from consistent effort, dedicated practice, and that kind of a growth mindset. Mindset. I think there are definitely people out there where they have natural talent, but they don't have the ambition and dedication to be really consistent about riding. And they actually see people who maybe aren't as naturally talented beat them in the show pen because they just do not, they take for granted that they're good at things and then have trouble getting to the next level with it. Um, I would say feel, that word that we use in the horse industry, feel in particular, is something that takes a long time to develop, whether you have natural talent or not. It takes a lot of riding, a lot of, yeah, (laughs) consistent practice. Yes, some people can pick up feel faster, but again, I think that is definitely a combination of just being consistent, possibly with that natural talent, but It is possible if you don't have that quote-unquote natural talent to become a really good rider. There are many riders out there who will say, I was not a good rider, but I just was very, very adamant that I wanted to do this and pushed through. Misconception number three, training is only about the horse. This one drives me nuts when it's coming from people outside of the horse industry who do not realize what is required of a rider to ride a horse at a very high level. And honestly, many riders make this false assumption as well. Many riders tend to focus solely on the training and development of their horses while neglecting their own skills and abilities. But it's important to remember that riding is a partnership and both the horse and rider play crucial roles. Allocating time and resources to improving your riding skills and fitness and knowledge is greatly going to benefit that overall partnership and the overall performance as a team with you and your horse. I've definitely noticed this with Diesel. Yes, Diesel's training needs to progress, but after watching videos of me riding him, I see that I also need to be mindful of my own skills. If I want Diesel to progress, then I need to progress as well. If I'm not riding him correctly, he's going to get confused or just whatever, and we're not going to improve. Misconception number four is progress should always be linear and quick. (laughs) The reality is that Progress in riding, like most skills, is not a smooth upward trajectory at all. You have to remember, like, yeah, regardless of the skill, you're going to have ups and downs. But throw in the mix a flight animal and it's like even that much more harder to make consistent upward result um, improvement. You're going to have ups, you're going to have downs, you're going to have plateaus, you might go backwards, like all these things. You're going to have setbacks and periods of slower progress. It's all normal and it you just need to see it as lame as it sounds as just opportunities just to 
step up and be the rider you need to be. But just stay patient, persevere, get through it, and just focus on that long-term goal rather than this short-term setback or whatever you're dealing with. The last misconception I wanted to talk about is it's all about winning and competition. Yes, competition can be a motivating factor, but it's not the be-all, end-all. Um, I really believe in the idea that the partnership between horse and rider is more important than any competition, any whatever accolade you could get. It's, yeah, I I think a lot of people can get that confused and make a lot of concessions for their tr- in training or with their riding in the name of competition. But I think that really holds people back in the long run. I think focusing on the, yeah, the bond between horse and rider, the partnership, the teamwork, and the results you get are getting together is a lot more important than when the next competition is and all that sort of a thing. So maybe a bit of a philosophical misconception there. But yeah, by debunking these misconceptions, we can approach our riding with, I think, a more realistic mindset, focusing on purposeful practice, knowing that it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of time, and just, yeah, knowing that if you're putting in the effort, getting guidance, and staying consistent, that is what it's going to take for you to become a better rider. And that is where we are going to wrap it up today. Uh, This is definitely a longer episode than I typically post, but I think it's a good one. And like I said, this is definitely something that I am focusing on now because I am very adamant that I need to become a better rider, especially if I'm posting things on the internet like I am now. I want to, like that's not my only purpose, like to impress people with my riding. I just, riding means so much to me. Horses mean so much to me. I put so much time in that I want to be good at it, right? And the thought of being good, I feel like, that is going to be a very huge reward in and of itself. Once I see that progress, it's very rewarding just to know that your hard work is paying off, regardless of whether you win in a competition competition setting or not. I think it's just seeing progress from hard work is very, very rewarding, regardless of whether it's with horses or not. But that is it for today's episode. If you guys haven't already, be sure to follow me. I'm at strong in the saddle everywhere be sure to check out my youtube video or my youtube channel because as i said i will be posting more frequent videos there you can find it at youtube.com slash at strong in the saddle and yeah like i said at strong in the saddle everywhere else and until next time remember it's always a good day to ride